You are listening to Realign Your Life Podcast, where I discuss with you strategies on how to realign your life and move towards the direction you always want to. I am Vivian, the host of this podcast, and every week I will bring value on how to improve and realign your life, either through a guess or my thoughts. I can't wait to share what we have this week. It's time to realign your life. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Realign Your Life podcast. I am so excited to have you here today. This is Vivian, the host of the show. And boy, do I have a treat for you today. Remember a couple of episodes ago, we talked about wealth and how you build wealth. Well, it's not all about investing. There were some other things that we have to do before we even start investing. And I think we were given five dynamic guidelines that we needed to be aware of and to be in tune to. So we have bought back today that person that shared that great information with us And I want to welcome you, Centario Greer from J&G Legacy. Welcome back to Realign Your Life Podcast. Good afternoon. How you doing, Ms. Vivian? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I'm doing even better now that you're here and that you're going to be able to help us figure out what it is that we need to be doing with our monies and our finances. But let me just let our listening audience know a little bit more about you, because some of them may not have listened to that other pod uh, episode, but if you didn't, you need to go back and listen to it. Okay. So Centario and his wonderful wife, Nanette, live right here in North Carolina. They have three beautiful children, Noel. Kaysen, and Cairo. He is a partner with J&G Legacy Financial Group, LLC, and he really believes sincerely that most people want to do what's right. They want to do what's right for their community, for their family, and most importantly, for themselves. And this all began back when he started his financial career in 2010. And as a recent college graduate, he felt that he wanted an opportunity to work somewhere that would make it very easy for other people to do what was right. So you can really take comfort in the fact that he is a proud member of this community, all of his life, you never, not too often that you really meet a native Charlottean. So he is very active in, in his community. And so he wants to pay it back. And as a, a graduate of Western Carolina University with a degree in business management, he and his partner formed this J. And J and G Legacy Financial. So enough about that. Let's dig into what he has to share with you today. So you ready to get started? Let's do it. Okay, okay. Well, you know, I know for a fact, having been in the working world, that October, listen, guys, not only is his birthday month. But it is also a time in the business world and in the working world where open enrollment happens. And this is where people begin to choose uh, benefit packets for their jobs. So, Centario, can you uh, speak to us a little bit about that uh, 
and kind of help give our listening audience some background or some wherewithal as to how to go about making sure that they are choosing those benefits that are going to be most helpful to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you for having me again. I had a blast uh, the first time. I'm looking forward to a, a great conversation today. And yes, my birthday, October 2nd. So that is on Monday. Um, I won't tell you my age, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to keep that, keep that on the low, but no, I'm, I'm excited to be here. And, and you're right. Uh, open enrollment is, <clears throat> it's, it's critical, right? And I think the important thing to, to acknowledge most people, just most folks, their benefit package at work is a lot of times where their financial planning starts, right? Because when you think about it, your deductions, you know, it impacts it impacts your taxes. Uh, it impacts what you contribute to as far as retirement accounts goes, your health insurance, your disability insurance. A lot of people, their life insurance is through their employers. And so when you combine all of those things, for most Americans, that's where their financial house is built, at least the foundation of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, again, that's why it's important to really focus on uh, what sort of benefits are are pertinent to you. And so I always tell clients if, number one, it is perfectly, perfectly okay to find a resource to lean on and ask questions about those benefits, right? Uh, depending on your income, depending on where you are in your life, I'll give you an example. We've got a, a couple, they're expecting their first child. Mm -hmm. So their health insurance is something we absolutely wanted to focus on to make sure that whatever they might need from, from a protection standpoint on the health insurance side, that they might beef that up a little bit, you know, this open enrollment because their child is due within the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. Again, those sorts of things are timely um, to, to consider. You know, we've also had individuals where they beefed up their health insurance for a, a situation like what I just mentioned. And then two, three, four, five years down the road, they forgot to go back and change it. So we were able to discover they were probably paying a little bit more for health insurance than what they really needed to. Because you, you follow me? So it's not something that you just want to set it and leave it year over year. You should evaluate where you are in your life what's coming up over the next 12 months, what should you take advantage of based on where you are in your life? I would say that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that is great information. And I know people need to really know that. And especially with health insurance. And it's been so much conversation around health insurance. And you talked about, I heard you say, uh, you want to make sure that you're evaluating this. And I heard someone just speak to me recently that this is open enrollment time. And it seems like the time, the time span that they have to really zero in on the benefits is gotten a little bit shorter instead of maybe a month to six weeks it's now down to three weeks so what are some things that people can do to make sure that they are uh on top of this instead of waiting to the last minute and, and what are some of the things in this uh open enrollment time that they want to look at besides their health insurance great question great question it, it's it's almost you have to know yourself, number one. For me, if I don't put it on my calendar, yeah. I'm likely to forget. So you have to know yourself. Um, I also think it's it's okay to um, to contact HR. I think it's also okay to ask HR, are there any resources within the company that helps people make decisions on their benefit enrollment and things like that? You'd be surprised. They might have people on staff and their job is to walk with you and, and kind of give you a consultation around your benefits. Some companies do, some don't. But again, I think you should definitely ask. Um, outside of health insurance, uh, here's a couple of things I would absolutely look at. Um, one of the most, the 
misutilized or underused benefits is an HSA account. That stands for a health savings account. I'm a big fan of those. Um, it, it's different than the FSA. Those are two different accounts. So you have HSA, right? Health um, savings account. Then you have FS, uh, FSA is flex spending account. Those are two totally different things. Wow. The HSA is, is kind of a blend of saving for medical expenses, but it also can pivot into a retirement account. Okay. This is why I'm a big fan of it because you can do two or three things with the same one account. That's always uh, valuable, right? So for instance, um, for an individual, the most you can contribute to your HSA is $3,850. Okay. That's the most you can contribute in a calendar year. If you're, if you're married then for a family, you would just double that number. Okay. But what an HSA allows you to do is you contribute out of your paycheck each month. It's pre-tax contributions. So whatever you put into your HSA account, it lowers your taxable income for that year. Okay. Um, once you get to a certain balance in that account, you can invest that money much like a 401k. Wow. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. So now you can not only have uh, uh, an account dedicated to help you cover healthcare expenses, but if you're not using the money, then it can remain invested and grow and earn interest and dividends and all that good stuff. Okay. If you don't use it for that calendar year, it rolls over to the next year. And so the pot can just continue to grow and get bigger and bigger. Okay. Um, if you need it for healthcare expenses, you do not have to pay taxes on the monies that you withdraw. That's another big advantage. All right. Um, let's say you never need it because you have excellent health, no surgeries. You do not need your HSA while you're working. When you now leave that employer, you can now transition that account to an IRA and now turn it into a retirement savings account for yourself. So you don't lose the money if you don't use it right away. It can now remain invested and continue to grow. That sort of account, I think, is very valuable because the number one cause for bankruptcy and retirement is medical expenses. Mm -hmm. So what better way to prepare for potential medical cost than by building up this bucket during your working years? And so if you ever need assistance or, or things like that around your home, you know, paying for your, your health care cost when you retire. Now you've got a bucket of money to pay for. So you're not paying out of your cash flow. You've got a savings account just for medical care and medical expenses. And if you don't need it, now it can just turn into a, a, a supplemental retirement account. So HSA is a big. <clears throat> I think that is invaluable information for our listeners out there, because I am sure there are many people that did not realize that or understand that fully. So you said there was a difference between the HSA and the FSA. Mm -hmm. SA. Mm -hmm. so, so the flexible spending account is. Yep. So, so generally it is, is used for medical expenses also, but it doesn't have that rollover feature year to year. And it also doesn't have that investment component to it as well. So it's an account where whatever you contribute, you want to make sure you use it that year. You use right? it or lose it. There you go. You want to use it that year. Um, and, and one of the things I would caution people on when you're enrolling or choosing which one of these accounts to enroll in, you want to find out, are you allowed to enroll in both or mm -hmm. are you only able to enroll in one of the two? So again, th this is why I say it's important to consult with someone because uh, you you may blindly have selected your FSA and not even know that that's why you can't have an HSA and you didn't even know that the account or that option was there. So yeah, there there is a difference between the two. And again, where you are in your life and what you think you need 
that should determine which one you enroll in. Well, that's that. Thank you for making that distinction for mm-hmm. us. The other thing that um, uh, I want to maybe get you to hit on while we're having this discussion about open enrollment is that 401k. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that a lot of jobs offer that because I can remember starting out as a young nurse. Um, I had no idea because we talked about this in your earlier podcast, how we just weren't educated on finances and money. And um, a lot of young people, my niece, I'm like, she had no idea about a 401k of what to do. So talk to us more about that 401k and whether or not that is something that you should consider on your job. Sure, sure. So again, going back to how your our benefits are typically the foundation where most people kind of plan financially, the 401k is probably the most utilized um, savings vehicle in America. Okay. I don't know the exact statistic, but I want to say approximately 90% um, of America's savings is in retirement accounts. Meaning some people save more in their 401k than they actually have in their emergency funds or in their bank account because it's, it's automatically deposited, right? It's payroll deducted. So it's an easy way to, have a systematic savings, right? Every single pay period. Mm-hmm. Um, the way a 401k works <clears throat> is whatever you contribute, uh, it goes into a, a, a an account, right? 401k. And, and you choose how you want that money to be invested. All right. There's different categories for, you know, aggressive growth, you know, moderate, and you have conservative so when you're electing the the portfolio that your funds will go into, you need to understand what sort of investor am I? What is my overall goal, right? Am I looking to grow this money as much as I can? Or do I want to be a little more conservative because I may be closer to retirement? I don't want to take a lot of risk. So you need to understand risk versus reward, and that will dictate what type of investments you select within that account. Um, The other thing you want to understand is the contribution rules. So in 2023, this calendar year, the most you can contribute to a 401k is $22,500 per individual, $22,500. Now, each year they tend to increase that number and allow you to save a little bit more. But right now that's the maximum. So you know, there's some clients we speak to, they think they're doing a good job saving, but they don't realize there's room for them to save more, mm. right? Or some people max out their 401k contributions early in the year. Once you max it out at 22.5, you can now, there's no more contributions you're allowed to make. So mm. we are able to talk to those clients to say, whatever you were contributing out of your paycheck, now that's going to be available to you because you've maxed out your 401k. Let's figure out where those funds should now be directed for the remainder of the year. So those sorts of things, again, this is why planning is important because um, it's, it's hard to catch all of this stuff by yourself. Um, the last thing I would say about 401ks is when you leave an employer, this isn't a, this isn't a 100% certainty. But most cases, you're you should roll those funds with you. OK, people say, well, well, what do you mean by roll them over? If you keep the money there, your employer decides who manages your 401k. It might be Fidelity. It could be John Hancock. You hear uh, names like Vanguard. Right. These are all companies that manage 401ks. But let's say they're with Vanguard and you like Vanguard. But when you leave the the job, you're over at your next employer. Let's just say they decide they don't want to work with Vanguard anymore. They want to work with ABC investors. Mm -hmm. You don't have any say so or any control over who manages the actual 401k plan itself. 
right? So they might roll over to ABC Investors. Their investment options may not be as good as Vanguard's. Again, you can't dictate that if you leave the funds there. So we tell folks when you leave a job, same way you took your favorite picture, you took your favorite stapler, your favorite pen, take your money to, okay? Roll that either into a new, your new employer's plan, or you can roll it into what's called an IRA. That stands for individual retirement account. And now you can still control how your money is invested, how it's managed. And now you can continue contributing to the IRA as well. Wow. Well, that is absolutely wonderful information. And and I know that there are some things in there that most of us don't know. So um, before we leave that 401k, so what if, and I know that there are some companies where there is a match. If Mm -hmm. you do so much, if you do so much, the company will match. Talk to us a little bit about matching, because I know this is a critical time, once again, for making those, um, you know, choosing those options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Great question. So a match is is, it's very, very important. Right. So, you know, a company, they might match up to a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. They may say we'll match four percent of your salary. But that means in order for you to get the match, you have to contribute 4% of your salary for that year. Mm. Okay. So we tell folks, understand, number one, what is the maximum amount that your employer will match? And you at least want to do that amount is what you want to contribute yourself because that's free money. Mm. That is free money. Okay. It's, it's almost like if your employer offered a salary and you say, well, no, I don't want the whole salary. Just give me a portion of the salary and you keep the rest. You would never say that. You <laughs> want the entire thing. OK, well, you know, 401k matching is that's part of your compensation. Take advantage. Uh, so so we say at least start with what they match. Now, some folks contribute above what your employers match. Uh, that's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It really depends on the situation. If it's to your advantage to contribute more, then do that. Um, Some employers offer Roth 401ks. I would would definitely tell people to look at if you should invest a portion of your monies in Roth 401k and a portion in your kind of pre-tax 401k, the only difference is how those accounts are taxed. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, what have you, do we expect taxes to be higher or lower? Okay. Most people think tax rates will be higher in 20 or 30 years. Well, if that's the case, then wouldn't it be advantageous to invest money into certain accounts that are going to be tax free when it's time to, dis- to, to distribute or, or pull funds? Right. So, again, that's what the Roth 401k allows you to do. So sometimes it's just having a balance, pre-tax and Roth. And again, find out if your employer matches both contributions. Sometimes they only match pre-tax and they might not match the Roth. So this is again, these are the things you want to take into account. So maybe you put in six percent to get the match and then you put in the extra for Roth 401k to kind of get the best of both worlds. That's just an example. Well, and that leads me to this next segment that I want to kind of transition into, but it's still kind of in line with what we're talking about now, because you talked about future taxation. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about we'll look into our future. What is going to happen, you know, retirement time. And Mm -hmm. I know that, um, some uh, <laughs> Gen Xers or, or Gen Zs think, uh, I thought the same way. I've got 100 years. I don't need to be thinking about no retirement. Like now I'm 20 years old. Seriously, I may not even live to 70. So what are some factors that people should consider 
when they are thinking about retirement? Great question. Retirement plan. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Great question. So here are the harsh statistics. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you think about your high school graduating class, whichever, however old you are, it doesn't matter. Okay. Think about a hundred people you went to high school with. Just pluck a hundred people out of the hat. Only about five of those individuals will comfortably retire. Five out of a hundred. So, I mean, you can kind of do that's about a 5% uh, uh, success rate. And when I say comfortably retire, there is no need for supplemental income, right? Uh, they, they don't have to do a part time job. They can truly retire and not run out of money. That only happens to about 5% of Americans, um, unfortunately. So I start the conversation with that because if, if nothing else that lets you know that retirement is a luxury item. Mm. It is not something that we automatically receive. We are not entitled to retire. That's not, that's not the America that we live in, okay? There's not an equality of outcomes. I think we all understand that. So if retirement is a luxury item, the first thing to do is change your mindset to say, if I want luxury, I have to pay for it. Okay. Meaning there's going to be a sacrifice. So either I need to save more money now than what I would, would like to, I, I need to save a little bit more, or I'm going to have to work longer. Right. Or lastly, when I retire, I'm going to have to change my lifestyle to reduce my expenses to where what I do have, I can be okay. So those are the three things. You either save more, you work longer, or you spend less in retirement. All right. I'm not here to tell you which one to do. I'm just here to say those are your three options. And you choose, be honest with yourself, which one of those options is 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 ideal for you. Okay. Um I, I think it's important to also mention Social Security. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the statistic last time I checked about 10,000 people a day are turning age 65. Wow. Every single day, approximately 10,000 people are turning age 65. Mm. This generation is called the baby boomer generation. Okay. Every single day. And I believe this will continue for maybe another 10 to 12 years. 10,000 people a day for the next 10 years are going to start drawing on Social Security. When Social Security was first created, the baby boomer generation obviously did not exist. Now, once you throw them in, you have more people pulling on Social Security than there are people contributing to Social Security. You can already imagine, just do the math, we're going to exhaust the Social Security fund. Now, will they ever stop? Social Security altogether. Whether regardless of which political side you sit on, I doubt that they will cut Social Security altogether. There's too many Americans that are relying on Social Security as their sole source of retirement income. So I don't think that'll ever happen. But is there a chance the generation like mine? I fall in the uh, what do I fall under? Oh, the millennials. Uh, I don't I don't wear that badge with honor. I, I have the the on a, an old soul, but I'm technically a millennial, okay? Our generation, I do not believe we will get a hundred percent of the social security we're entitled to. So again, when we when we talk about planning, setting expectations, we already tell clients reduce what you expect to get by 25% from a social security standpoint. Okay. So now let's let's project into the future. And let's say your Social Security is, is $30,000 a year, hypothetically. If your lifestyle is $80,000 a year, then where are you going to make up that extra $50,000? And that's where the retirement planning starts, is taking a look at your current lifestyle to say, add up all your bills, add up your travel, add up your gas, food, groceries, you know, 
tithes and offerings, donations, whatever you do, add all of that stuff up. Okay, add that number up. Then take your age and extrapolate it out to age 65. Okay, every 20 years, double the number because that factors in inflation. So if right now you spend $50,000 a year, 20 years from now, you'll need $100,000, right, to to equate the same 50000 you spend now because the prices of gas and food and milk and housing and everything else is going to go up. So take your number, multiply it out, and then double, you know, double it to account for every 20 years, and then ask yourself, Social Security is going to account for whatever portion it is, whatever the shortfall is, that's what you now need to plan for on your own. And 401k typically is not enough by itself. You will need something outside of your 401k. And that's where, again, we coach clients to say, what investments complement a 401k and, and still allow you to increase your success ratio for retirement? So some, some of that sounds a little bleak. Yeah. However, I know that um, this information will spark some motivation there to mm-hmm. really consider what, how are you allowing your money to work for you? And now is a good time to really zero in and focus in on that. So there's lots of other great opportunities out there for investment. So share with share with our audience how they can look at right now where they are right now. And I know you talked about that some uh, in the last episode where you are. How do you analyze where you are right now and be Mm -hmm. able to prepare and be able to. Great question. Great question. Yeah. So, you know, this is now kind of shifting into, you know, comprehensive planning. Okay. And again, that is something that, that we offer is something that we believe more people should take advantage of. Cause you know, when we talk about life insurance, we talk about your benefits at work, that's foundational stuff, right? Um, it's still important, right? It's, a, it's, it's how you build your foundation, but there's more to a house than just the foundation. There's a lot of other things you need to consider and, and you have to be a little more comprehensive when you start talking about planning to your point, evaluating where I am now versus where I need to be. That's now where we need to develop a game plan. And so, yes, the first thing we do is we look at your balance sheet Here's all the assets you have, your cash, you know, bank accounts, 401k, money market, whatever, real estate that goes into that category as well. Uh, Here is your debt, you know, mortgage, student loans, credit cards, all that good stuff. Let's do the math and find out what your net worth is. Okay, number one. Number two, let's take your expenses. Okay, let's write out all of your expenses for the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's break those down and, okay, how much is going to Uncle Sam? Because taxes, it's an expense. (laughs) You pay out of pocket whether you you feel it or not, you're paying, okay? So let's look at taxes. Let's look at how much you save into your 401ks, your IRAs, et cetera. Let's look at how much you spend on debt. So, you know, if you've got mortgages, credit cards, student loans, let's, let's look at how much of your income is going towards debt and what are the interest rates on those debts, okay? And then lastly, lifestyle. You know, travel, food, vac- you know, clothes, barbershop, hair salon, that's that's lifestyle. Add all of those things up. The reason we, we itemize those and break them up is because when you think about retirement, there's certain things that might be removed from that equation if you do the right things. We might be debt-free. So some of our expenses could be reduced just by paying off and eliminating debt before we get to retirement. OK, um, there's other things like, you know, if you've got children and, and, and child care costs and things like that, college expenses, those things you need to know when they're going to occur 
in your lifetime. And when those are removed now, just looking at what you need to live on, now you can can be uh, a little more realistic with how much money you need to have. All right. The next thing you do is you take your investments, right? Your contributions, your 401k, your pension, your whatever you have. And now you sit down with someone and say, show me what this is going to grow to be worth um, conservatively, right? Use conservative assumptions. What is this going to grow to be worth when I'm ready to retire? Mm -hmm. So now you can say, I know what my lifestyle is going to cost in retirement. What will my assets be worth in retirement? And is there enough money for me to pull on for the rest of my life based on where I'm at today and what my projections show? And you want to get as close to, you know, 95%, you know, 100, you want to get as close to that as you can if there's a deficit and you you realize, yeah, I'm not on track, that's when now you sit down and say, okay, what puts me back on track? So mm-hmm. I, I heard you say the word bleak and and I definitely don't want to be uh, that individual, uh, but, but I think it's important to be honest with people um, because one of the reasons people do not trust institutions and they don't trust people like myself is because we are not honest. And for, for us, we're not here to, to grade any of our clients. We're definitely not here to judge. We just say, here's where you are. Where do you want to go? And what is required to get there? We're the navigation system. We'll show you the route. Now, whether or not you take that route, it's up to you. Right. But, but I, I do think it's important for people to know the truth. Absolutely. Um, you know, cause the last thing you want is to, to, be a greeter at Walmart. Nobody wants to be that person. Well, we need somebody there. <laughs> we do. We do. But I don't think anybody when they're 25 is like, you know what? No, no. I'm no. be 80 years old. <laughs> and I no, nobody. <laughs> right. So we can find something else to do with our time. Um, yes. Yes. But anyway, I, I hope that makes some sense. It, it does. It makes a lot of sense. And, and I really do hope that I'll, the people that are out here listening, that um, that they really are taking some notes on this or that they will pin this 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 episode and go back and listen and take note of all of the the pointers that you've given us here as to how we can began you know be, began to get on that road to a, a successful uh, retirement so mm-hmm. um, I don't you know for me when I think about that word um I don't think I will ever ever stop doing something but right. but when we have things in proper place, it will allow us to do the things that we really enjoy doing. That's right. And so I, I love that um, that formula that you're given us or that you've given about these are the things that you need to look at. You know, so these are some things that after I listen to this podcast, I can walk away and say, oh, OK, well, I really need to get a plan in place. And I can start this today. Mm-hmm. And so would you say um, to someone, what would you say to someone that hasn't began to have a plan in place or, or even know where to start? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. And, and you know, in, in those situations, the first thing is you you, you realize, OK, I need access to information. We have access. The question is, which information is valid, right? Which, inf- what, which information should they really be listening to? And I think this is where trying to surround yourself with people that you trust uh, is important. I, I Most of our clients that we're introduced to is through a referral from another client. Very rarely does a stranger just walk up to me and say, you know what? Hey, man, I want to get my life together today. Like, that's typically not what happens. 
So I would tell folks, if you really have no clue where to start, um, it's okay to be honest and ask someone in your circle, someone you respect, someone that you trust, and, and honestly, someone that you look at them and say, hey, I could see myself, you know, from a financial uh, space, they seem to be stable. Thing, You know, you don't know anybody's real situation, but, but ask them and say, hey, do you have an advisor? Have you ever worked with a financial planner? Who do you go to for questions? Um, if you have a CPA, that's a good question to ask your CPA. Hey, I'm looking for an advisor. Is there anyone you could recommend? If you know an attorney or a realtor, like there are certain uh, professions where we all kind of know a lot of each other and we kind of work together. Real estate, um, CPAs, attorneys, financial advisors, a lot of us are connected. So if you don't have any idea where to start, ask one of those professionals and I'm sure they can start to point you in the right direction. They may even vet out certain advisors for you. So then when they come back with a name, again, it's probably going to be someone more suitable for you because they've vetted them out already. That's what I would say as far as just finding someone to give you guidance mm -hmm. and then, you know, just be very transparent and tell them, I have no idea where I stand. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm starting from ground zero. And if they can't meet you where you are, then that means that's probably not the advisor you need to work with. I love that. I, 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 and I, I just, I love your sincerity. And once again, this just gets back to, you know, what motivates you is just knowing that everybody wants to do the best thing and do the right thing. So with that said, I know that you gave us a list of five things on where we really needed to get started on the last broad, on, on the last podcast. And it was all about, um, uh, let me see if I can remember all five of them. It was uh, make sure you have a power of attorney, mm -hmm. uh, uh, health care, mm -hmm. um, medical directors. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a wheel. Yep. Place uh, a trust. There you go. Necessary, and that fifth the, one. I can't the last one was just the. Uh, so you got medical directives. Yes. That's your your living will. That's where you yes. you know. Hey, do you want to be resuscitated or not? Things like that. The but the the fifth one is your healthcare power of attorney. That's okay. where you appoint someone to make medical decisions on your behalf. If you're not able to. So with that, with that information and with this information that we have today, uh, guiding us toward how to begin to, to really build that income that is going to take us into our golden years. I want to say. There you say. go. There you go. <laughs> so, like that. so with that we've got the right people and 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 just hearing you say the network the network that you have with J and and G legacy can take our listeners and get our listeners to the place where they need to be so Absolutely. tell us or share with us how you you, you can be how you can be contacted yeah, sure, sure. So uh, you can definitely go to our website, uh, www.jandg, so jandg legacy.com. Um, you can definitely go there. You can see our entire team. Uh, we've got some videos on there. We even have a contact us button, all that good stuff. That's on our website. Uh, you can certainly find me on Facebook. Uh, Centario Greer, C E N T A R I O, Greer, G R I E R. I'm on Facebook um, and LinkedIn. That LinkedIn probably is is maybe even a little bit better for for business stuff like that. So LinkedIn, uh, and then you can also um, just call our office. So our office line is seven zero four five five nine nine seven eight six. You can call. Um, even if no one is there, it routes to our cell phones. So you can contact us at any time. Now, you can't cannot text that number because it's, it's a landline. 
but it will route to our, our cell phones um, if no one is in the office at that point. Wow, you still have a landline? <laughs> in, the, in the office, we do. I, yeah, in the office, we do. I mean, we have we have cell phones, but yeah, in the office, you know, it's still old school. I, I think some people, you know, I think they like coming into the office and, you know, we've got our conference rooms and all that good stuff if they want to meet in person. So, so well, and with that said, how is there an opportunity for someone to come to the office or to meet you in person or to do just a consultation to see if they if, if this is the right fit absolutely. absolutely so we we start with a a 15 minute intro call okay mm-hmm. that's what we call it. and it's just for us to get acquainted right um to understand kind of you know where you are in life age marital status do you have children what type of work do you do and and ultimately what do you want what sort of information are you looking for that's mm-hmm. what we try to talk about in that 15 minute intro call um, from there, if, if we need to, we'll schedule a, uh, a one hour appointment. Okay. That's either in zoom or we'll meet in person. Okay. And that our appointment is where now we will start to take a snapshot of your financial picture, your income, your assets, your debt, your insurance. And we, we take a lot of thorough notes. We provide, um, a recap email to you. So once we've taken our notes and we've gathered a lot of information, we always send an email to say, here's what we took away from the conversation. Here's what you've provided us as your goals and your objectives. And here's next steps. We provide that in an email to you after that Zoom meeting or that in-person meeting. From there, we can tell you what level of engagement we think makes sense, right? Do you Should you work with us on a foundational planning level? Or should we be doing something more comprehensive or are we not a good fit? Right. That's after that one hour meeting, we can let you know for for certain. And again, we'll send an email and typically clients will will determine, you know, how they want to move forward. And, but yes, yes, man, there's no cost for, for the first, the intro call and the, uh, that initial meeting, there's no cost to that. And in some cases there's no cost to work with us, you know, Moving forward, it really just depends on the situation, um, what level of service and advice you're looking for. Um, that's and all of that stuff we uncover in that one hour meeting. Um, so you'll know what to expect and if there will be a fee associated. Wow, that's awesome. That is really wonderful. And and I just know that there'll be many of our listeners that out there that will want to engage with J and G. Would you um would you be willing to send me that link so that I can share it on the podcast? Um, Absolutely. So that people will know how to reach out to you. Absolutely. Yes, I'll send it to you uh as soon as we get done. Okay, great. Yes, this has been so wonderful. And, and and just as a recap, you know, you've given some fantastic information to those that are still out there in the workforce that need to know how to intelligently and succinctly be able to choose those benefits that is going to work best for them. If you need more information on how to do that and how to make those choices, it, uh, is J&G available to help give some guidance in that also? We are. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Most, most things financially related, you know, we tell clients uh, most things we can assist with. Um, so, again, that's where that intro call is 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 so useful because it allows us to just get a, get a snapshot of what you know, what are you looking for? What are your hot buttons right now? Um, and then we will direct the conversation from there. But yeah, we, we can help with, you know, benefit packages. uh 401ks, investment accounts, um, insurance policies, uh, budgeting, right? Debt management strategies, college planning, you know, transitioning from working into retirement and what you, we, we can help with all those phases of life. Absolutely. Well, 
Listeners, I want you guys to blow this phone up, <laughs> up to blow, blow up these connections because I'm telling we're talking about your future. And it seems like Centario has shared some information with us today that is very tangible, that is very doable, and you should be excited that, hey, it's never too late to get started. Right. Am I right? You're, you're absolutely right. Okay. You're absolutely so right. It doesn't matter where where you are standing right now in your financial p- picture. Today is the beginning. Today is the first day of your financial, positive financial journey. So, um, in, so in ending this episode, what are two or three things that you would leave with our listening audience? Mm. That's a good question. Two or three things I would leave. Um, holidays are around the corner. Okay. Uh, I know it is very easy to want to make the most of your holiday season. I would just say be mindful that January 1 is coming around. Um, If you are uh, curious about setting goals for 2024, this is the time to start setting those goals. So, again, um, not to say that they will interfere with travel and family and holidays that are coming up. But I say this is the perfect time to meet with someone to say, hey, here are my goals for 2024. Um, What are the things I need to be thinking about over the next three months to make sure I'm ready to launch right into those goals at the start of the year? Uh, That's one thing. Number two, I always come back to um, how important insurance is. Uh, I say, you know, when you're around family this holiday season and, you know, I'm blessed to still have all four of my grandparents. And mm-hmm. and I know that's rare. But when we're around family, aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, talk to your talk to the elders in the family and create the conversation, make it make it comfortable. But we need to start talking as a community. Where is our family headed? Um, where do people stand financially? Uh, if there was an emergency, grandma or grandpa, where would I go to find information? Who would I call? Right? Who's the the Who's your accountant? Who's your your CPA? Right? Who do you bank with? Not that you want to be in their business, but if something happens to them, how else can the family do the things that they need to do? So there needs to be some conversations around the holidays. I think. Um, I would say those are the, probably the, the two most important things that come to mind right now. Great. And I and I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, this is this is October, may as well be October. And in a couple of months, 2023 is no more. And we're nope. starting off on a new year. So now is the time to make sure that we or getting those plans and those goals in place and for the upcoming year and beyond. And also, I do agree with you the importance of knowing where everybody in our family stands because family is important. And just remember, we're not in we're not made to live here forever. So people need to people need to know where you stand. So thank you so much, Centario, for for coming back and being with us again. And I know that um, once again, you guys need to wear out that phone line and they are available. And uh, once again, um, if you have questions, I will be posting that uh, contact information on our Facebook page and Centario. Uh, I wish you a happy, happy birthday. Don't party you. too hard. You are a financial person, so don't spend <laughs> all your money on the party, okay? Save yes, ma'am. for that retirement, okay? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And, Thank you for that. And, uh, you listening audience, uh, 
if this information has helped you and you know of someone else out there that could benefit from this, please make sure that you share this with them. And until the next episode, stay safe and peace. I hope you enjoyed this episode. The best gift that you could give me is to share this podcast with family and friends. And don't forget to review it. That way, this podcast will grow organically. If you need to reach out to me, please check out my Facebook page, DM me there, or you can email me at G-O-D-S-K-O-W at gmail.com. We have upcoming Bible studies that we would love for you to join us in. Or if there is a guest or someone that you would like to see me interview on this podcast, please let me know. We are here to work together to realign our lives. Until the next episode, take care. And I look forward to sharing more and more with you as we realign our lives. Peace until next week.